so there's still one person missing, but I think we can start. So welcome to the first Twitter application workshop in our office. Uh, I get it like five experienced packagers to, to help you uh, start with packaging. So today uh, we'll start uh, with a few talks so you can get some uh, necessary information about packaging. And uh, then we will have a uh, lunch break and in the afternoon uh, there will be more practical parts so you can, you can work on your packages or you can do some uh, uh, package <coughs> reviews and so on. And, and you can, uh, of course, you can use the assistance of our, uh, our experienced packages. Uh, there is the last person, I guess. Uh, I left a few things uh, for you on the tables. There's a flash drive with Fedora 18 Alpha, so you can you, you can try it out and help with testing. There's also a DVD with Fedora 17 if you need it today, and a few more other things. And now I'd like to welcome uh, Niersuki. He's gonna have a talk about how to make a good Fedora packages. Okay, hello. My name is Mirek Suki, and I will tell you today about the, the very basics of uh, uh, RPM packaging. Uh, just, uh, I, I will ask you, uh, you all should be just a beginner, but uh, does anybody try to package uh, some RPM before, before this course? Uh, some of you did. Okay, nice. Uh, so, uh, assumption uh, for this workshop, uh, uh, you know how to use Linux, uh, you know how to use text editor, uh, I, don't, I don't care which, which one it is, uh, just uh, that you are able to write a letters there. Uh, and uh, I assume, assume that uh, you know something about RPM uh, packages. So you install at least some, some package on your, or in your machine before. Uh, the limitation is that we uh, will cover here very simple situation. Uh, we'll try to package uh, one small uh, package which is already in Fedora. Uh, and later uh, this day, uh, we will try to package your uh, your package which uh, you want to do. Uh, we'll try to. We will try to. Uh, you will see that uh, uh, some some pieces are a little bit bigger for you for now, but we we may start with something. Uh, Anytime you will have question, just just raise your hand and uh, ask me immediately. And don't save it for later. Uh, uh, we will go briefly through approximately uh, 15, 17 slides of theory for the first time. Uh, but I will go very briefly through that, uh, and uh, then we will follow by the uh, building the spec file and building the. Uh, RPM packages. Uh, during this period, uh, you can ask uh, me or, or my colleagues here. Uh, you will have some trouble to help you. Uh, so, what we will need for now? We will need these packages. So, if you don't have them installed, please do that now. And we will need these tarball. So. Please download it to your notebooks. We will work with that later. Um, by the way, anyone has anything else besides Fedora installed on their notebooks? Okay. Do you have Fedora? <laughs> you? Okay. Okay. No so that we will come back. Wait a minute. Uh, can we perhaps make this available? I mean, the 
slides. Put them on. Are they? Oh, uh, no. Can I know. You, you can put it on video. Cool. They can be put on one. We are using RPM packages at all, or or packages. Uh, maybe good question to start with. Uh, we should know uh, what we have on, on on our disk, because if you install it from from Tarbo, uh, we'll have no track of the files. Uh, we will have no track of dependencies. Uh, uh, you don't know where, 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 where it resides, what can be safely removed, what, what not. Uh, so for, for this reason we use RPM uh, packages or Debian or Debian packages. But packages are good. Everybody has this uh, this package is and Tarbo downloaded. Can I can I move on? Do I have a bit problem? Maybe I just make a typo. Where is this? Okay, thank you. You can go. Okay, please, please give me one minute. For, for good packaging, uh, we prepared the Fedora uh, document, which is called Fedora Packaging Guidelines. Uh, you, will, you will read it a lot the following day. Uh, you want to package your project. This is not something uh, old and rigid. This living document, which is constantly updating, uh, which means it is not 100 perfect. Uh, you can you can follow it, but uh, you will uh, later find that there is some exception, and you can always uh, ask Fedora Steering Committee to to put your exception to that document. So it still evolves. Uh, it's very long, I will show you that document. Oh, okay. So, this is, there is, this is a very long document. Uh, uh, later on, you, you may read it this, this evening before sleeping or something like that. And it addresses usual problems you will meet during packaging. So this is not something boring, but it's actually helpful very, very often. Uh, there is one, one addition. Uh, these are mostly generic guidelines and guidelines related to C and C++, just normal compiled languages. But you could have noticed, perhaps, can you go, go, can you back, go back to the huh? outline? And you see application-specific guidelines. Uh, basically, each of these have their own uh, guidelines, uh, which can be more or less the same language as this. Uh, and they address specific issues with that class of, uh, of packages. Uh, so we have guidelines for um, Java, Python, um, Emacs, plugins, well, uh, extensions, and so on and so forth. So uh, you definitely need the basic ones, 
but then depending on the package you try to the package you will have to learn additional uh, yeah. stuff. If, if your package doesn't fit into these rules, you can always uh, discuss this uh, later with the reviewer or committee, whoever, uh, to uh, whether you should strictly follow these guidelines or, or not. So this this is not rigid and uh, and you can make exception from this. Uh, yeah. Very often it, it is made an exception. Um, yeah, one really important thing to know about the guidelines. They are guidelines. They are not laws. They they don't cover all the cold corner cases uh, equally well. So you can come with a package that no one thought someone would do things like that, and we don't really have guidelines for certain cases. Uh, in that case, uh, it's best to ask, and there's gonna be some consensus from people that package stuff. And perhaps a new guideline group is going to be written about that specific type of packages. Okay. Okay. You may heard some myth about RPM that doesn't work well, or it's hard to create packages, or hard to install, or or the so-called dependency hell. Well, it's true sometimes for uh, badly written packages. If your package is, package is correctly written, the spec file you later uh, learn about, uh, nothing from this apply. Uh, it can be very easy, you know, how to do that. If you don't, then it, all, all this meat can apply. So, yeah, sometimes it works very, very well. Uh, and it's easy to install, easy to remove, if you write it correctly. If you don't, it can be not your nightmare. Uh, for dependency uh, resolution, we use YAM. Uh, everybody knows about YAM, yeah? Who doesn't know YAM? Nobody, so we can skip it. You know everything about that. Uh, so, packaging a standard. Uh, it's used for version control, so you know which version you have. Uh, you know uh, you can audit software, verify package if some package you know, file from your package doesn't change. Uh, you can easily audit uh, uh, which uh, uh, which files uh, on your disk doesn't belong to package or which belong to which package. And you can easily audit your licensing, which is uh, important for, for uh, enterprise environment. Uh, what are common mistakes uh, for new packages? There is a lot of spec file generators. So let's say you have RubyGem or Perl module, and there is a spec file generator, so you uh, RubyGem in input and it will create some spec file for you uh, uh, which is usually able to build uh, the RPM directly. Uh, but uh, you should remember that functional is not the same as good. It will create something but something usually needs some uh, touches from from a human and make it correct uh, so it's easier and not nightmare for you later uh, very often the new packagers uh, package the parable binaries this is not good because you never know what is the in the binaries so in RPM we always try to build the code from the source and it's not more important in Fedora, where every package has to be rebuilt from scratch and no binaries are allowed. So, this is for, for the reason that we always know what are the binaries, that there are no uh, Trojan horse or something like that, or virus or whatever. Uh, Another mistake is disabling check for unpacked files. RP 
RPM offer you uh, several checks and do that for you for free at the end of uh, building packages. And when some problem occur, uh, you may find that easiest solution is to disable that check. And that's your first step to, to help. Because the checks are there for some reason. So rather than disabling this check, please address the issue itself. Okay, crash course in RPM usage. Uh, binary package uh, is usually uh, named with the file uh, uh, with the file. So it uh yeah, some pointer? No. You should have something somewhere. I don't know where the, it is. This is the file name, the first one. And it differ from package name. Package name is just the goldfish. The whole part is the file name. Sometimes you will need to use the file name, sometimes you need to use package name. For example, when you are installing package, the RPM uh, dash uh, AVH, you use file name. When you are query, query the package, you use the package name. Uh, the same for removing package. So, please distinguish these two. Uh, file name is something different than package name. Okay, beside the package, binary packages, we have the source packages, uh, which contains the source, the upstream source, some components, sometimes patches, some, some, or some other packages. Uh, files uh, maintainer one on there and the spec file. All these components together uh, are used for building the binary RPM packages. Source RPM packages are installed with file name. So use this this line for installing source packages and these packages don't go into RPM databases, so uh, they are just unpacked to your uh, drive into this, usually into this directory, and uh, that's all. It's not not tracked in, uh, in your RPM databases. If you want to remove it, you can remove the, each file on uh, this RPM install or you can use this command to uh, remove the uh, unpack uh, source files. Yeah. So install in this case means just unpacking the source packages to some directories. To some directories. Yeah. Okay. Nothing else. Uh, you can you can do the same with RPM to CPIO and oh, it's usually just easier to use. Yeah. It just uh, it just uh, is your shortcut if you download the source RPM uh, to extract it to, to the correct places so on. Just not, nothing else. If you use, I don't know, Midnight Commander that can directly go into the, tar into the RPM and open it as a okay. file system, as, a, as an archive, which is basically RPM is an archive with some metadata. Yeah. Uh, some, some shortcuts uh, or tips for uh, building with source RPM. Uh, if you re uh, get a source RPM and you want to rebuild it, uh, you can run RPM dash dash rebuild uh, the uh, name of the file uh, and it will install that source RPM, rebuild that, uh, and you will immediately get the binary packages. So uh, that's, that's the tip or uh, if you just need to build the binary package on your workstation. Uh, if you need, uh, if it is already on your disk unpacked, uh, you can execute rpm build dash ea goldfish spec, uh, which will uh, run uh, all the steps we will later find, uh, learn about, uh, and create binary packages. It will create both source rpm 
and uh, binary package. Uh, the building uh, has a uh, few phases and you can step, stop in each step. Uh, there are more options, for example, dash BP stop after, uh, after preparation phase uh, where or uh, sources are extracted. Uh, more information about these phases you can find uh, later in this course or in main page of uh, RPM build. Uh, patch its uh, so extracted sources, uh, which are later patched, goes in, usually into this directory, rpm build slash build. And you can also rebuild package for different architecture. For example, you have the source rpm and you want to rebuild it for Spark. You can do that with dash dash rebuild and setting the variable target to spark v9. But be careful with that, as uh, not every program uh, detects uh, this variable and, or don't use uh, um, make file uh, and the major doesn't thought about that. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So be careful about it. Uh, later in this course, we will find uh, about RPM macros. Macros are just variables, like like in shell script. Uh, they can uh, contain integers or string. Uh, but uh, for us, it will be much easier if you always treat them as a string. Uh, there is a lot of uh, common macros already defined for you. You can list them if you run rpm dash dash show rc or run it on your machine and it will show you a huge list of macros. Uh, it, it can be useful for you to go briefly through that list and see what, what you have available. Uh, if you want to, some macros are defined using other macros, so it can be tricky uh, to find uh, exact value for you. Uh, but you may use rpm dash dash evil, evil uh, with the macro name and it will evaluate the macro and will print you the output. So uh, this is a quick way to uh, check uh, what the value is. Uh, most system macros begin with uh, underscore. So macro underscore uh, been there expand to user uh, slash user slash bin there are two macro formats uh, one which begin with percent uh, in the brackets and one uh, which looks like a shell variable uh, with a, with a uh, dollar sign uh, they are the same but uh, for your sanity you should do uh, use only one type. Don't don't mix these two types of macros. Uh, and personally, I recommend you to use the first first one type. Uh, worth mentioning is uh, this notation uh, with a question mark at the beginnings, which means if variable full is defined, use this and expand it. Otherwise, it doesn't get used at all. We will later uh, use that in our spec file. Commands in RPM spec uh, are uh, used uh, are, or made using uh, this character as in a shell. And they are ignored by uh, RPM, which is not 100 correctly because uh, they are ignored. But if in the command is macro, it is still expanded. So uh, if you have there are some uh, 
some very tricky macro, uh, it, it can surprise you sometimes. So common common case being comment uh, patch macro, which applies a patch. Mm -hmm. You comment it out, so you think, okay, it's not going to be applied now. But even then, it's going to get applied because it gets evaluated, even though it's commented out. It's kind of tricky. Uh, this is the thing to uh, comment out. Macro is uh, just made from uh, the person character, ordinary character, which is done uh, with double double person sign. Okay. Beside the system macros, you can define your own macros. It is it can be defined in a tilde slash dot rpm macros file uh, and please create this file now because unless you create it now you will, you will forget about it later uh, we will put there uh, very soon some macros for you and in this place I will remember you that put it into your home directory, not true directory, because uh, you can say, okay, I will rather build a package as a root, because root can do everything and I will have no access problems. Don't ever do that, please. Uh, unless bad thing may happen, uh, in, in that spec file can be anything, so uh, you should build it your uh, directories uh, where in worst case you can just delete your own files so, and not not uh, delete your system completely so don't ever build RPM as root it's, don't do that okay beside these macro files we will need this structure uh, tilde slash RPM build uh, build, build roots, ATC. Uh, you can do that manually or you can run this command rpm dev setup tree, which will do uh, create this file for you. Okay, and uh, for packaging, we will need to copy this file which we download at the beginning of the course. Uh, into the file, into the directory, rpm build sources. Please do that now. There should be another architecture that we cannot build rpm Yeah, this is 64 build uh, source slice, yeah. Yeah. That's why it's better to use rpm. Yeah, be better to use the script. Do that for it. is hardly any time used. Um, in any case, it, it won't matter that much because RPM build, when, when you actually build an RPM, it will create a directory. Uh, no. so, I mean, the sub directory it creates, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. I'm sure this RDM, this setup tree does nothing for me. It doesn't create the directories? No, well, it just returns, and, but the directory is not created. This is the directory. This is the directory. That would be a part. Okay, we will check, we'll check that. Uh, um, in the meantime, we will return to the RPM macros file. Uh, you can you can put your uh, your own macros there, but be careful that those macros will not be available on uh, other systems. For example, when you build the package uh, in Fedora Koji, it will most probably not be defined there. So don't use that in your uh, spec file uh, for something 
uh, which will fail if the mapper is not defined. Uh, and don't use them in pre or post section, which are executed uh, before or after the package is installed on the user machine. So, uh, but we can use that for redefining uh, macro, which are already defined by system. For example, we can define macro uh, SMP and flex. Uh, which are passed to make files uh, and you can define for example dash l3 which uh, makes speed up building your spec files which basically stay, uh, say make file that uh, uh, run uh, several threads concurrently until your load of machine will uh, reach number three so if you have for CPUs, it's perfectly fine for you. Uh, if you have more CPUs or cores in, in your uh, workstation, you can you can use higher number. Or you can put there some check, for example, uh, underscore underscore arch underscore install underscore post uh, and these files uh, which are uh, given you by RPM DevTools packages package uh, checks if your package doesn't have uh, R path uh, which is bad thing in your package so you can even create your own uh, tests and checks and put their later in, into across. So what about okay, so I found the I found the mistake. I found the mistake. I already had this RPM macro and had something called top tier specified and it created there. Yeah. Right. Ah, yeah. That's another issue. Yeah. And there can be top tier, which is uh, which point to do. It Usually, but by default point to do uh, tilde slash uh, uh, RPM uh, build. RPM build, yeah. So if you have defined and points somewhere else, it can make sense to redefine some directories uh, for RPM. For example, I have redefined the top tier to current directory. In some cases, it's just simple. But we, we can get back to that later, I guess. It's just common tips and tricks for later. Okay, and I think this will be the last slide from the. Question. Yeah. When I created the directory structure, uh, it uh, modifies my macros, and there are some crazy scripts. Should I leave it like this? Or yeah, you can leave it. Okay. Just right now, you know what what is it, and if you are not uh, satisfied with that, you can redefine it later. But these scripts are something like I don't know. It's just as well. How many cores you have, or something? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, we'll put there some value based on your hardware. Uh, so, creating RPM uh, is basically uh, cooking some binary from spec file. Spec file is something like receipt for us, which defines how the RPM package should be built. There are uh, several package uh, stages, uh, preamble, which define uh, licenses, package name, uh, source uh, tarball, ADC. There is a setup phase, uh, which extract uh, the sources and unpack them. There is the build stage, uh, where you uh, build the package. Uh, there is the stay install stage, which uh, put the build uh, build it files into the correct location. Uh, sometimes there is a clean phase uh, uh, where you uh, clean the mess you you done. Uh, but mostly the RPM do that for you. Uh, file sections define uh, which files should go into the. Uh, package, you can define which uh, files go to sub-package, ATC, 
And uh, last but not least is the change log, which defines what you changed. We will go through all these stages uh, in this uh, workshop. Uh, and you will find that they are very similar to shell script. Okay, preamble. In the preamble, uh, it's just the initial section which describes the very basic of the, of the RPM packages. It defines the uh, name of the package, versions, to which group it belongs, licenses, it tracks the uh, releases, uh, it contains sources and fetches, if there are any, uh, and the package requirements. Summary and uh, usually some custom macros definition. Uh, in past we used the builder root, this is just good, uh, uh, just, just history lessons, uh, and you may find it in most uh, spec examples, uh, if you learn from, from others, uh, but it is not needed right now. Uh, if, you, if you use uh, Fedora 12 or later, or, or RHEL 6, uh, then it is not necessary and RPM defines this uh, macro for you um, and a handle build root for you. Uh, so right now uh, you need it only if you uh, want to build package for RHEL 5 or RHEL 4. So uh, for most people this is history so uh, we'll not use that at all and if you find some package uh, which uses that, use that usually uh, can safely remove that. Okay, we are going to create the spec file. Uh, we should create them in tilde slash rpm build slash specs. Uh, in fact, you can create it anywhere you want because the sources are uh, expected in the rpm build sources, builds are built into rpm builds. Everything should be on, uh, and have to be on, on its place. Uh, but you are, we are call, calling uh, the RPM build with the file name with this uh, full full path uh, of the spec file, uh, which is usually in the spec directory. But if it is somewhere else, nothing bad will happen. So this is just for your sanity. Uh, put in, into RPM build spec, uh, otherwise you can hardly find that later uh, and you can create mess on your disk. So, If you like, like clean environment, do that there. So, please open this file and if you use uh, Vim editor, it will create a uh, empty template for you, if not, if you are using Max or some other editors, uh, you will have to uh, write all the, all the uh, characters yourself. Or you, and can, or you can use uh, RPM with new uh, specs. Yeah. Or, but that's not the big problem. Just, if you open this file, it should look, and you have the templ template, should look a lot like this. Uh, this is an uh, empty preamble, and we will try to fill in the blank pages. Uh, space. So, we are going to package uh, which is called Anum, which is very easy. You are not going to start with your packages because they are uh, usually quite harder and we will spend more time on that so we'll just explain it on a very simple package. The name of the package is Anum. Uh, here the white space it can be either tabs or spaces. Choose whatever you like but then be consistent. Doesn't don't mix tabs and spaces. Version. We are going to package version 1.1. 1 
Uh, hopefully you know the version from somewhere, uh, either from the name of the tarball or the, from the uh, project page or whatever. Uh, there is no no uh, guidelines from where the version should go. Hopefully you know that. Does it accept also letters or only numbers? Can I tag something like alpha 1x? Yeah, uh, if you are building, pre uh, let's say, release candidate version or the project doesn't release version at all, uh, there is in the uh, Fedora Packaging Guidelines section, it describes how you should uh, name the version. Uh, because uh, you should uh, make sure that if you package, let's say, release candidate one, and you name it 1.1.rc1, uh, that it should, it should upgrade to 1.1 without anything, which is not easy to ask. So uh, you are not first uh, who are going to solve this problem. So just uh, if you have tricky version, just open the guidelines and read a section about uh, version numbers and uh, usually there is the solution for you. Uh, gen general quick answer, uh, simplified is version is really just as simple as it gets, so really yeah. just numbers and dots, nothing else. And if you need to add additional information like RC, alpha, beta, whatever, it goes, through the, it goes into release. Uh, and there is a specific way how it sh should be in the release, so it, the upgrade path is always, you can always update to a higher version. Uh, we, can, we can get to it and I can explain later how to package, uh, let's say, uh, tarball from, uh, from Git or SVN, which is yeah. quite common. So yes. we'll get, we'll, we can try we'll it. it later. Yeah, this is just simple. So, ver version is the version which upstream claims it is version. It's usually some 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 uh, some string. But uh, you can make several packages uh, from the same version, and for that we use re release. Version always say uh, stay the same unless upstream create new release. Uh, but if you are uh, fixing some problem, for example, adding some security patch or just made there some mistake and fixing some bugs for the same version, you should bump up the version, the release number. This is what tracks the changes for the one for the same real version. Uh, and in the release, we put uh, this uh, this uh, release candidate as so we just mentioned. And in Fedora, you put there this macro. So, so what this macro is? On, on Fedora and RHEL, this macro expands to string, uh, let's say, FC16 or EL6, uh, which is unique for the uh, platform on which you are installing. Uh, so if you are building for for package for uh, Fedora 16, there will be Fedora FC 16. If you are building for Fedora 17, there will be FC 17. Why it is there? Just to distinguish two packages with the same file name, but which are not exactly the same. Just imagine some Python library. On Fedora 16, we have Python 2.5, I think, and the library is installed into user lib Python 2.5 something. And on Fedora 18, it is, there is uh, Python 2.7, I think, and the library is installed into the different uh, path user lib Python 2.7 etc. So if you would have a uh, library Python uh, dash foo, some version, some release, dot no arch, dot rpm, then the content 
will be different if this is packaged for Fedora 16 or Fedora 18. So we added there the disk tag, which, is, uh, which will be, become the part of the file name. So you can easily distinguish uh, two packages which are in fact different. That's a tricky question. Uh, it will be expanded, and since the macro is not defined, it will be empty string. So it will be uh, it will expand to exp empty string. Um, actually, no. no? You, you, can, you can actually try it yourself. Uh, if you if you if you remember a few slides back, we had this RPM dash dash uh, and if you just put in some macro that you think up, it's just gonna be, RPM is gonna think it's just some string. It's, it's not gonna do anything with it. If it cannot uh, expand the macro, it's just gonna leave it there as is. So if I use uh, macro as foo, it will just leave the string foo there? Yeah. Huh? Uh, it, it, not, even, not just foo string, the, but even, even the, the percentage. Ah. Uh, like the whole thing. It's oh, not going to do anything. Okay. So, you're going to see it, but it, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to get ugly. It, it, if you, for example, accidentally make a typo somewhere, uh, you're probably going to see it because of it. Again, okay, more, more information about this tag can be found on this wiki. Summary. Uh, summary is single sentence describing what a package does. Uh, by definition, it does not end with period uh, and should not be longer than 80 characters. Uh, this is the string which is usually be, uh, put by uh, some higher level packaging uh, scripts or programs uh, when you see list of the package and their summary. So think about that, about, about such uh, graphical uh, user interfaces and don't start your summary with something like enum is package which do, uh, it's not, not, not needed to repeat the, the, uh, the name of the package. So for, for our situation just use sec and jot like enumerator, short sentence it doesn't end by dot. Uh, we will we will put a longer description in, into description uh, section. So save your uh, verbose description for later. Licensing. Uh, we have to, uh, this tag uh, this uh, this uh, section where we define the uh, license. Uh, and we put their short license identifier, identifier. Uh, Fedora defined, uh, again the link is from uh, Fedora packaging uh, guidelines, there is a link to uh, licensing wiki, and Fedora defined uh, which license are good license, and uh, defined their abbreviated name, uh, and there is of also, the list of bad packages, uh, bad licenses, which are not uh, suitable for Fedora. Um, but right now we don't know which, uh, which license uh, is used, because we trust nobody. So, we will investigate that later, and for now we will put their to-do and we will return to this uh, part later when we uh, unpack the source files and we will investigate uh, the contents of the project. So just keep it with to do. Uh, group. Uh, group tag is quite useless. It's uh, requirements from uh, the old ages, uh, from uh, previous uh, century, even thousand years ago, 
So, uh, but uh, RPM still required that. Uh, uh, you can see a list of uh, available groups uh, if you cut this file. These are shared of RPM star groups. Uh, there is a list of the available groups and you can choose uh, from this list. You can even put some, something outside this list but just stick to this list and choose whatever you like. It really doesn't care uh, if you make a mistake because nobody is using that. So. I was just about to say uh, that was changed two weeks ago, maybe maybe a month, yeah. month at, at most. So, but yes, now it's no longer even required by the family. Yeah. So you can just leave it out if you if you don't and want to deal with it. If it's not required now, if I build a package without it, will it work in the older systems? Uh, yeah, it will. It will work. It um, will work. Uh, guidelines uh, always cover at least currently supported uh, releases, unless stated otherwise. Uh, so, if whatever is in the guidelines currently has to work at least on Fedora 16. But you know, if you want to support the bell, there's no problem. Yeah. So, if you want to build packages for, you know, the and it, uh, Redditors, uh, the Redditors, uh, repository, you have to follow the rules to match, you know, the guidelines for Fedora, but also the older rules for, I don't know, Fedora 6. And if you will use uh, RPM lead, which we will find later about, uh, uh, it will it will uh, shout on Fedora 16 that uh, you have missing groups. So yeah, we are in between period, so which for for new system it's not required, but for for older it is required. So uh, you know about it. URL. This is a link to a upstream project where it resides, where is the wiki page or a link, uh, some, some, some words from author, uh, links to mailing list, etc. Uh, it is, doesn't uh, parse by, uh, by programs uh, or scripts, uh, doesn't uh, use for anything automatical. So it is more for the humans. Uh, when uh, you uh, open information about packages, usually the URL are displayed there for you. Uh, and it's for the humans to know, okay, this package is the package version of this project. Uh, here is the link to the web page where you can find more about it. Uh, so put there something uh, you <coughs> you think it is the uh, home page of the project which is sometimes not uh, very clean sometimes it can be github page sometimes some federal hosted project some or some other project uh, some projects use more more web pages so it really doesn't care just put there something sane uh, some which has sense for you What is more important is source zero. Source zero tag tells uh, what source files we should use. You can have multiple source entries, which is source zero, sor source one, source two, uh, if you need them. Uh, for example, uh, if uh, upstream doesn't contain configuration file, and you need some for uh, some configuration file for Fedora, you can create it and include it using source zero. Uh, so one. Configuration, configuration file of uh, source source one. Yes, or one. Pardon me. Uh, source zero usually contain the upstream tarball. Uh, we put there a uh, full path. But uh, RPM will use only the uh, right, most right part under last slash, and 
this is this part is street. So uh, later in the RPM build, use only the name version tar bz2 part, uh, and we'll assume that this file is in the RPM build slash sources directory. Uh, this part, this full uh, uniform resource location is there for uh, some check scripts which uh, may download the uh, uh, tarball and compare it with the tarball included in your source RPM packages and uh, check if the checksum matches, uh, if, you, if you doesn't try to cheat uh, or it can be for commentator uh, which uh, say okay you may check this, uh, this uh, location if there is new releases something like that uh, so rather, you don't need to use the full uh, URL, but it is best habit, good habit to do that. Yeah, if if there is, if the upstream has normal download tarballs, then use them. Yeah. Uh, there are cases where uh, upstream doesn't have source tarballs, so you have to use either Git checkout or SVN or some other version control. Uh, and then there is a guideline for that as well. Um, we can yeah. we can look at it later. Yeah. Okay. You, you should you know explain how you get the tar. Yeah. For for example, uh, right now uh, recently I made a re review of uh, one uh, big game for Fedora zero AD uh, to be specific, uh, and there was uh, some part which is covered by buttons. Uh, so we couldn't use the original tar tarball, tar uh, and we had to remove the, this part which uh, is covered by uh, button. So uh, if you need to do such thing, just put uh, comments above where you describe. Okay, I take this tarball uh, from this uh, location. I extract it. I deleted these directories and then packed it again. And this is what I used. So other other may uh, do exactly the same same step and end up with the same tarball as you used. Uh, ideally, with the same content and the same hash, if if, if it's possible. Yeah. Um, what I've seen in a few spec files, and I've started to use it as well, is instead of commenting how to get the tarball, you can create a shell script which actually generates the tarball uh, with, I don't know, option. It, it can be a really simple uh, script which is just gonna call SVN export and then tar create something. It, it can be almost anything, but it should generate the tarball. You may notice that I used here uh, some macros, name and version. And it was not defined before, but actually it was because Every section from the preamble actually defines new micro. So, very, uh, when we say that the version is 1.0, it creates new macro called the version with the value 1.0. The same for the licenses group, etc. Uh, but uh, most of these texts are not used as macro, but uh, version and arrays is very often used as macro, and it actually uh, may help you because if you define it uh, this way, name version, then you don't need to change this line when you are releasing new uh, upstream version. So when upstream release 1.2 and it builds the same way, it installs the same packages, just change something inside those packages, then you need just to bump up this version and you don't need to change anything at all. Uh, I wonder what's the benefit of using name macro because how often the project changes its name? And if it changes, I can just uh, replace it manually. And it makes, makes the text more obscure, so I think macro name is not really useful. It is. <laughs> it, it, it depends. Sometimes you have really, really, really long names of the packages of the upstream. Mm -hmm. So in that it it's not a requirement. Uh, it's not requirement, you don't want to, but yeah, if you don't want to use it, don't put it there. If you think it doesn't make sense. It's very, uh, it's uh, more usable if you use sub packages, mm -hmm. because let's say if you have a package foo, 
which uh, have some packages full uh, dog, full bar, full something. Uh, then if you use the uh, full uh, in, in the inside of the spec, uh, and you replace uh, and you rename it and it replace all the occurrence of the full, you may uh, replace uh, some part which you doesn't intend to replace. Uh, it's very hard, it occurs very hardly, I never, uh, or I, 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 I done that twice at life, in my life, so yeah, you are, you are true that uh, it doesn't, the name marker doesn't help so much. Uh, it does, if you copy your spec file, because you are doing another package which is similar, you don't have to yeah. change too much things. Yeah. Okay. For example, Right now, I'm packaging some Ruby gems, and uh, Ruby gems uh, should usually have a, a huge uh, doc session, and which should go to Ruby gem name uh, dash doc sub package. And uh, when I have, uh, if I will show you the, this this part, no, I will not show you another package. Uh, this is just defined using the name, and the versions, and the release, and it is exactly the same. So I'm just going copy and paste, copy and paste, and uh, doesn't have to think about it. So yeah, you 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 can use the same snippets. And of course, it is uh, good habit. Uh, to use the macro where possible. For example, for a long time I think about why the hell I should use uh, underscore bin uh, bin dear or s bin dear. It's always the same. It doesn't change. And voila, we have the federal 16 and we are moving uh, 17 and we are moving uh, slash s bin to user s bin. Yes, it sometimes will change, and you never know what. So, use macros. Uh, description. Uh, description is a long uh, sentence or paragraph uh, uh, or generic block of text which describes your package. It could be multiple lines, uh, where you describe the functionality of the package. Uh, it should not be longer than 80 characters, so if you need more uh, space, just grab the line and continue on that next line. Uh, try to not uh, blindly repeat the summary. Uh, you can put there even more paragraph if you, if you would like. Uh, quite a few upstreams have a really nice description with bullet points and uh, some lists of features. Feel free to include that, it's actually better. If the description is one kilobyte, well, it's probably too much, but uh, 10, 20 lines is quite common and it's a good idea to have a long description. So that people who are not necessarily familiar with the package will get the idea of what it's about. Okay, so this is what we should have. Okay, ignore this. I forgot that we have to do there. Uh, but this is what this is what you should have right now. Everybody has, everybody have this. This is written in your editor. Or can I know? No. no. <laughs> so just write it there. Why? Why not? Yeah, okay. I can just. What's the difference between one and two in the release? Uh, I just copied that from uh, Fedora and there is uh, uh, release number two, so I just uh, forgot uh, to change that to uh, zero. So you have there zero, uh, one, or, or me. You have there one, I forgot there. Two. 
Somebody else has. Uh, uh, doesn't, who doesn't have this uh, this in his editor? One. Everybody. Everybody has this written. You are writing. So you are. I will return to, to this later if you if you need to. Uh, I will just continue with uh, some uh, pieces which we don't use in our example. Uh, we use source zero, but uh, uh, we can use as well page zero or page one, page two, uh, etc. Uh, if we need to apply page for the uh, source star ball we have. It is written with the pa uh, tag page zero and, and the file name. Uh, and it is later applied in the uh, bill in the press section. We'll later find about that. Uh, sometimes there is a build request. Our, our package is very simple. It doesn't need anything but just working uh, system. Uh, for a building, but if you need some uh, Python library, Ruby library for uh, from Fedora uh, to be able to build, uh, put put it in the preamble, like build requires name of the package, and optionally you may specify which version you need. How, how do I usually define this build requires by studying the code or looking at the website or is there something cool that will tell me which is required? Yeah, you should you should know. Uh, uh, one one thing is uh, first you can start with the with the building without any anything, and it may later find uh, fail in the build section and it will the project will complain. Okay, I'm missing lib. Uh, Leave something, uh, and I could continue. So you will install it on your workstation and put it also into build requires. But that doesn't mean that you have everything, because you it's your workstation and you have there a tons of other packages uh, which you may use for the building, but you didn't mention them in build requires. For that we have a mock, which is. Uh, building which can build the package in uh, change root which is very clean and install just the base system or you can uh, uh, use Koji uh, every packager can can use that uh, even if every Fedora user can use that for scratch build you don't need to be packager and Koji is just so uh, some web interface where you can submit your source RPM and build the package, uh, and it will uh, build it into into mock, which defines for the environment for you, uh, and you know, it will uh, show you the errors. Uh, uh, for example, okay, I'm, I'm missing this library, so you will uh, put it in build requires, then submit it to Koji again, and then say, see, okay, this package needs library foo. I'm going to install it before. Building the package, and then we'll continue. Good idea is to read readme in Tarball because if it's upstream, it's, you know. Yeah, upstream usually say yeah. the requirements really for building the, these packages <laughs> are this, this, this. Question. Uh, yeah. there, are, there are some basic packages that don't need to be uh, defined, like GCC. Is it yeah. Uh, and what's, what's the package set there? Uh, uh, in the, in the Federal Packaging Guidelines, there, there is uh, uh, the set written, for example, uh, you don't need to specify bash, uh, even if you personally don't use bash and use, for example, corner shell or something like that, and you don't even have bash installed. 
very s defined some set of packages uh, which are uh, assume always installed. Uh, uh, but personally, I never check that. I'm just using common sense and say, okay, this is everywhere. So, uh, in worst case, when let's say I will assume, okay, telnet library should be everywhere, but it is not recently. So, uh, it will, it will fail to build for you. Uh, you will you will see the logs and see, okay, it. My common sense failed, and I will have a good build from requires down there. Yeah. Uh, okay, build requires are for building, and we have requires without the build prefix. These describe what is needed for the runtime. Build requires and requires doesn't need to be the same. Uh, you can have package or a library which you need for the building, but you don't need it for runtime. And vice versa, you can have package which you need for runtime, but you don't, don't need it for the build time. So don't blindly copy everything you find about to both build requires and requires, but just think about it for a moment and uh, put what you need for build time, build to requires, and what you need for runtime to requires. Again, uh, there is no explicit guidelines, just read the readme of the project, or try and play, when you build the package, try to run that, and it will uh, yell with some uh, error, okay, I'm missing some uh, blade or whatever, uh, just put it into requires, try again, and again. Uh, RPM has a mechanism which it uses to automa also automatically generate the requires. Uh, so if, if your application is a classic C compiled stuff, and it links with some libraries, RPM will automatically add them to requires. So you, don't need, you just need to put the devil packages into build requires, but they don't need to be in the requires. They actually shouldn't be in the requires. It, it works for the C, C programs, where it is very easy to see uh, against which libraries it is linked at. Uh, it works with parallel uh, libraries and programs, because, uh, uh, but it doesn't work with everything. For example, uh, Python is nearly the same as parallel, it's very easy to parse which library it use, but nobody uh, uh, to this day write uh, this uh, this plugin or whatever extension. to extension uh, to retrieve the uh, requ requirements. So uh, you have to manually put it for Python, for Ruby gen, for Ruby. Uh, but for some languages, it works for C and for Perl. I don't know which other. So. Was there a procedure in case uh, of, for example, Java or Ruby when I can use Ruby or JRuby? Uh, how should I specify uh, requires for runtime? Uh, when both uh, Ruby and JRuby could be used, or well, we, we could have multiple uh, implementations. Uh, then usually those runtimes both will define some common uh, provides. Uh, for example, in case of Java uh, or JVM, uh, they all of them provide Java. So if you have uh, requires Java, uh, it can be Open JDK 1.6 or 1.7 or. Okay, so there is always some general identifier which should be. Yeah, should you can you can find it in the uh, package guidelines at the bottom. Very little link for for. Uh, each specific language guidelines for Ruby, Java. Uh, for example, in Ruby, you will say uh, requ build requires or requires uh, Ruby dash ABI uh, in some version, and you doesn't care if uh, it is uh, satisfied with uh, pure Ruby or J Ruby or uh, whatever else. Yeah, it's some package which provides Ruby API. Again, so uh, it's good. You you can start with putting all the requires there, 
and later when the package is built, you can query the package which uh, requirements it has and you may see that some requirements are listed twice. So you see, okay, this was generated by automatically by RPM, so I can remove uh, those R requires uh, I put there and leave it there only the automatically generated one. Uh, you may use conditions. We had very simple package, uh, but if you want to, yeah, here is the example of the generic uh, uh, provides. Uh, you may uh, have one spec which builds on RHEL and on Fedora. And this is the, uh, and you may use it, use it, use if condition and uh, some macros. Uh, usually are used the RHEL or Fedora which expand to the version of the RHEL if it is RHEL uh, or to Fedora if it is Fedora uh, or you can use uh, any other macros you have available but this is the common uh, use so these, uh, these templates say okay if this is RHEL version 6 or if it is Fedora uh, uh, less than 17, then please use requires Ruby ABI in version 1.8. Uh, otherwise, requires Ruby ABI in version 1.9.1. Yeah, there, there is error in this one, I see. Uh, if, if you can avoid them, um, it might make sense to actually maintain different spec file for different... Yeah. It depends, but it also, again... Yeah, but, but sometimes you need it, for example, for architectures, yeah. and you need yeah. to do different steps on uh, Intel platform and different uh, step on ARM platform. Uh, the point was, if you're, for example, maintaining the same package in Apple and Fedora, it's usually up to the well, it is up to the maintainer to decide if he wants to uh, keep the same spec file in all or, or some subset of the uh, of the branches. So he can keep the same spec file on. Fedora 16, 17, and Apple 6, and keep a different one on Apple 5 because it changes too much, for example. Uh, it's usually up to the maintainer. Um, I guess once you start trying things out, you'll see which approach uh, you like more, uh, which makes you work less. Least time. Where is the error? <laughs> Where is the problem with this? Uh, with this condition. There's a zero place uh, in front of the person to sign. That's not a problem. Because <laughs> well, 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 uh, zero uh, is the, the same as initial scripting. Because if the macro doesn't expand, you have empty space there. So uh, 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 let's, uh, if, uh, if this is not real, then this is exp uh, not expanded at all. So we, you will have percent if Nothing is equal to sex six, which 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 uh, uh, end up with syntax error. So you want to have their zero. Okay, and what is if if uh, it actually expands? Yeah. If it, if it expands to six, it's all six, not six, which is. It is it's all six, six which is. Uh, in this case, but for example, seventeen, it says it's all seventeen. Uh, that would be a different kind equal, of... Equal, equal, compare, uh, like, uh, doesn't, doesn't compare the strings, but the, uh, but the numbers. So, 06 or 0006 is the same as 6. So, that's the no, no problem. So, is that a different base? It doesn't really two bases. Uh, RPM is not, in, in that case... No, no, no. It's, it's just, not, yeah. just the, always, always the same. If you have RHEL 5 or 7, it always goes through the condition because the Fedora will do nothing and uh, the RPM build will fail. So you have to regenerate, in such case, you have to regenerate your uh, patch. 
Yeah. Where do I store the patches in the sources? In the preamble. Uh, yeah, in the sources. Okay, so if there is a new upstream release and uh, the patch, the patches are not included, I have to rename all the files. Like, if, if you can back up the slide, the patch also contains a version. Like, uh, one, one, two, three. Yeah, parts. usually should. So it's, should it's not strict uh, requirements, but, but uh, it's nice to have. So I should rename the files as well. Yeah, if they are going to new release, they usually doesn't apply cleanly, so you have to create them uh, again. <coughs> if, if they apply cleanly, you can leave them all uh, and leave this uh, old version. Okay. It's actually good to tracking, you know, check what, what version was not applying the patch cleanly, so it's better to <coughs> So. This is what we have now. In our prep section, we just put our setup dash p, nothing else. So everybody has this written in your file. You know, leave, leave it for for a bit. I can just. is uh, build. Uh, in build section uh, we uh, we build the binary components from the source. If the project is uh, created uh, by the uh, classical make configure, make install, make uh, or make configure, make, make install, then uh, this is the part where we are going to make configure. Uh, and, uh, and make. Uh, in our example, we will put there uh, person configure. Uh, with uh, disabled docker rebuild, I honestly don't know why, why uh, it is needed for this uh, this package. Uh, let's let's put there and we will use uh, make. We will pass the macro SMP and flex. If you remember, this is the macro we put into uh, our RPM uh, macro in our home directory. Uh, so this is the same macro. Which is passed to make file, and uh, it actually tell, tells the make file uh, that it can run concurrently in your system. Question. Yeah. About the options for the configure macro, where, uh, the documentation can be found where uh, all the options. Uh, the wait the the the, the, uh, the option that you've seen there. Can can you go back or uh, forward or sure? Yeah, the option is not for the macro, the option is for the configure script itself. Because the configure macro will expand to the, to the usually, you can check in with show RC, uh, I think it will expand to user, user being uh, uh, configure or whatever in your system. Uh, so this is this is actually for the for the configure itself. Uh, okay, the, the macro is there uh, so that by default, if you use auto tools and if you just run configure without any uh, additional uh, arguments, it will set the prefix for the application into user uh, local. And by default, since we are distributing the software, uh, we want to put it into user directly, not user local. Uh, so the, that's what the configure macro does. Uh, among other things, it sets more directories okay. properly. Mm -hmm. But uh, so that's why. So it like sets the prefix automatically. Yeah, prefix plus few other directories. Uh, so you don't have to. Normally, you you can you can just theoretically use configure itself the script, but then you would have to set each directory and it's. 
likely that you will miss something. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, syscomp there, which is the dash etc, uh, not dash, slash etc. Um, things like that. So prefer to use configure and just uh, add the custom argument. That, you know, in our project, we, in our project we use uh, make, but if your project use uh, CMake or Spons or whatever else, just uh, uh, use it accordingly. Uh, this is just an uh, easy example. If you have problems with the build section, you can run RPM build with uh, dash B dash C or dash BC, which stands for build, and C for compile and stop. So it will finish the build section and will stop, will not do anything else. So you will find the result in uh, tilde slash rpm build slash build where it will be the result of the build section. And you may manually investigate in the, what, 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 what was the problem. Yeah, I'm just going to repeat, so it's, it's going to be in home, the, uh, it, after we run the rpm build on this file, it should mm, generate the build directory, unpack the tarballs, basically, and, and build the package. So, uh, or com yeah. But unpacking the tarballs, if there is a directory in the tarball or it's not, it's my problem or it will just find out? Okay. Uh, it's your, you have to deal with that. Uh, normally, the setup macro there, in the oh. top, it expects uh, that the tarball will contain uh, name dash version uh, directory and everything else below it. If not, you can uh, manually specify with the dash n option and specify what is the top directory. Basically, the setup the macro, the link down there uh, describes it pretty well. Uh, there, there are quite a few options, uh, mostly dealing with non-standard tarballs or uh, you want to do something a little bit more fancy. Um, but. So everybody has these two lines uh, in your uh, spec file. Okay. Okay. Next next stage is install. Now, uh, in the in the first stage. In the build size stage, we just build, build uh, the binaries, uh, but it just just build. It doesn't. Uh, it is not uh, put into the proper place. So in the install section, we do uh, several things. We create build root. Uh, RPM do that for you and clean that. So, and this is where you start. Uh, so you should lay out a uh, file system structure. Uh, so for example, if you are putting a uh, file into the uh, directory dash user share dash foo, uh, then you should create the uh, directory uh, build root dash user share uh, foo and copy those binary or data files there. So you just mimic your file structure in the build root directory and put files there. Uh, if necessary, you can remove uh, unnecessary installed files. Uh, If uh, for, we used uh, configure, which uh, set up some destination directory for, for us, if you don't use configure, uh, and you have just make file, you may pass the uh, desk dir direct, uh, variable, uh, which is uh, set to build root, uh, to that make file. Uh, if, you, if your make file doesn't uh, handle this dear, then you have some more problems and you have to uh, patch, make follow or create it even on your own. So that 
that still think I'm not going to speak about right now. So we just assume uh, that we have no problem. Is this CMake somehow supported? Just replace the main CMake or some programs now want the CMake instead of Make or? I'm not using CMake, so if you to use uh, does the directory, it's just yeah. basically it's it's just shell script. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, you have the whole problem right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have yeah. all the snippets for CMake, so let me show you what you're Okay, in the guidelines. Okay. Okay, so our our installation file. Uh, Section will look like this, just only this line. Uh, again, the most spec file you will, uh, if you check, there will be uh, removal of uh, build root, uh, which is not needed uh, since RPM 4.2 or 4.4. Uh, RPM do that now for you. It will clean up the build root, uh, so we'll always start with the new one. Uh, so this one is needed only for, for Apple 5 right now, RHEL 5. If you, if you charge it to Fedora, you don't need it, and you can just run the make, make install. I've created the spec file with some commands. There and I have a macro make install instead of this. I assume it will do the same, right? Uh, no, that's actually. Uh, you just try to evaluate. That, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 but um, I, I, would, I would have to find it, but the make install is. I'm not sure if it's for, forbidden mm -hmm. to, to use it, but I'm pretty sure it's discouraged. Uh, well, I'll, I'll look it up. I told you to use RPM as uh, RPM macros as much as possible. Is this same? Yeah. Making but the destination there. Uh, uh, personally, I'm not follow these rules either. Uh, every time because uh, when you uh, run that uh, uh, RM some file which you don't need on then you don't need then. Uh, you should strictly saying use the macro uh, macro uh, percent underscore underscore rm which will expand to user uh, to R rm but uh, okay uh, there, there there is nearly macro for every command uh, so it will be person side everywhere so uh, just okay. just keeping this if you open packaging guidelines and search for make install you will find a section which says why the make install macro should not be used and then inside it it says it must not be used so, well, there is a slight uh, inconsistency there but uh, so in the end make install macro must not be used in the spec files in Fedora uh, there is explanation why is that so um, so instead yeah. Well, uh, depends. There are two make install macros actually. There is make underscore install mm -hmm. and there is make install. Mm -hmm. uh, the make install without the underscore, that's forbidden. The other is suggested. Okay, so because if you if you have the template created by the RPM dev dash uh, new spec or whatever, uh, it's uh, created with make. Underscore. Yeah, okay, but yeah, actually okay. this, this is okay. The make underscore install is okay. Right. If there was no underscore, it wouldn't be okay. Uh, the, the problem with this template is that it was created in Fedora 12 and not updated since then. Which one? The, without the underscore? Uh, the, the, the template for the, uh, for the spec file oh, in the VR, okay. Vim package. Okay. So it is uh, several years outdated and not about Ask the maintainer of the impact why I don't know. So, uh, why, why the guidelines still evolve? This, this package uh, is uh, several years old. This, this template is old. Okay, uh, two sections remaining. Uh, 
file section. Uh, this consists a uh, list of package uh, package contents. Uh, if the file is not in the file section, it is not in the package. Therefore, it is not installed. Uh, if you have uh, some package in build root, some, some files in build root and not in file section, uh, the, it, will, it will complain about it. And the same if you have in file section, uh, but it is not in your build root, uh, RPM will complain about it again. Uh, There are some tools, uh, usually in Makefile, which can generate the uh, list file, file for you. And some people use uh, this list to uh, pass it to file section, which is possible, but please don't do that, because uh, you don't pay attention to the file section then and you don't properly mark configuration file or documentation files uh, and you may miss some important uh, steps or uh, files which change licenses etc. It is always good to not use a generated list file uh, in this section. Uh, it's, uh, for example, you update the packet. Let's, let's assume you used automatically generated uh, uh, file section and then uh, you update the package and it begins auto-generates so everything works but you, then you don't realize that for example upstream removed some part of the package or uh, or added some bundled uh, other package inside or did some really really unacceptable thing for Fedora but you will not even notice it so yeah that's okay. why for now, we don't, we don't know which uh, files uh, we should include, so we will leave it as it is, just put their person files at the end. Uh, in some spec file, you may see even uh, person def utter, the utter line, uh, which defines uh, default attributes of the files. Uh, the Fedora default is uh, dash root root dash. Uh, which means uh, use the uh, same uh, um, attributes uh, like uh, have the file in uh, build root and use uh, owner root group root and the directories will have access uh, mode uh, the same as have in uh, build root. So if you for some reason have uh, all packages in installed under different user, let's say Apache, you will you can use uh, def utter and pass parameter dash Apache Apache dash. Uh, if you need to specify uh, different attributes, uh, you can use their uh, the attributes. Let's say uh, six four four. Uh, but that, that's, that's the default, the 644 and 755 is the default in, in Fedora. Uh, but usually don't need to use that because uh, you usually define the specific attributes only for some file for which we have percent added uh, uh, macro in, in file section. We may uh, uh, tell about it later. So. Most time you don't need it, uh, and uh, in recent uh, Fedoras it's not required. In past it was required, uh, now it's not required. Last, uh, last section is changelog. Changelog is used to track package changes. Uh, it is not intended to replace upstream changelog versus usually describe every change in the project. Uh, you don't need to mention there every change, just uh, just the summary or why we are building a new version or new, new release uh, uh, and uh, to leave the trail uh, why we are building. Just don't put there rebuild for some reason. Yeah, just rebuild because some reason. Uh, 
and you should update it on every every change. So if you are rebuilding, uh, just create new change log, uh, so there are no gaps in, uh, in, the, in the list. Uh, this is the example of how the change log should should look, should, should look like. Uh, for the record, the change log uh, format it's kind of long, and you have to remember what the day is today, which I never do. So uh, you can use RPM dev dash bump spec, uh, and you give it the spec file, and it automatically raises the release by one, and uh, adds a change log entry which <coughs> says bump spec or something, which you need to change obviously the, the text. Uh, but at least it fills out the date and everything is in correct format. The format is star, date, your name, uh, your email, uh, version, which should match the version and the release in the preamble section, uh, and uh, a bit uh, dash uh, the description of the, of the change. Yeah. So should I restart all the changes in the spec file, for example, edit patches and so on, or all, all the changes, even the upstream changes? It's up to you. Uh, oh. Well, if you are just bumping release and you are using the yeah. same upstream version, you are describing okay. usually only the change in the, in the spec file. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm including patch, which address, uh, security, CVA and some number. Uh, or I'm adding new build requires or something like that. Uh, uh, if you are, if upstream create new release, uh, then you can either do rebase to new upstream version something, and or you can say rebase and th there there may be more entries. Yeah, new package for Vedora dash and it includes features something like that. It's up to you how how mo much for both you want. No, there's no rules. Uh, but generally, most people uh, don't write the upstream uh, change log in the RPM spec file because RPM spec file, change log is really just what changed in the spec file. Mm -hmm. uh, you can point to upstream uh, changes if you want to. Uh, if, if upstream provides them, it's, it's, it's a really good thing. So instead, you just update it to version. 367 and HTTP and link to their upstream. Because, because some federal tools like PackageKit or Doji shows the list of changes, and I wonder whether it is taken from here no. or from somewhere else. It's, uh, the list of changes is taken from Bodhi itself. Uh -huh. uh, Bodhi is a. Uh, well, it's, we'll get back to that later. It's uh, it's additional tool after you have the RPA yeah, update. Yeah. Yeah. Again, quiz time! I said that this version really release should match the number in the preamble. So, why I have not used macros here? But I said we should, should use macros. I am, didn't use the percent version uh, dash percent release. Yeah, because if I, if I would use that, that in the generated RPM will be 11 11-3, 11-3, 11-3, yeah, because it will again expand, so we don't we don't want we want persistent number here, which doesn't change every rebel package. So uh, can I define a macro in the spec file? Like uh, my name, for example. Not, uh, to, not to use it. Uh, the RP, uh, because of the RP, uh, you tried the bump spec and it put some weird uh, <coughs> default name in the change log, I assume. Well, you, you can define macros. You can. You, can, you can define macros directly in the spec file, but for macros which you use globally, uh, for example, your name and email address, you should put it in our, uh, dot, dot RPM macros. Well, it well, it won't work if, if I upload it somewhere. No. Right. Uh, if you didn't want to use his name in, in, in changelog, 
then uh, yes, you can define macro in the preamble section, usually before the preamble section. And um, it's uh, the syntax is uh, the syntax is person global global uh, name of the macro name and the definition. Uh, you may see if you study some old spec file that define is used for definition of macro. There is a uh, differences between these two because define will immediately uh, evaluate the macro and put it into the uh, macro variable while global just store there the definition and is evaluate in the time when when the macro is used in the spec file so uh, most time you want to use the global because the define uh, uh, does some, something else which you usually don't don't want. Okay, so this is how our spec file should looks. We added this this uh, this two new section. Everybody has this uh, this written in their spec file. I think you can combine them. How can you combine a directory and file in the directory? When, uh, when you want to uh, state that it is config, no replace. I think it's not possible. Um, uh, you want to say you, you... I package the whole directory, but I uh, have a uh, config file in it. Okay, so you okay. say... Right, so... You either don't make, do you want to? Uh, is your is the directory? No, it gets complicated. Is the directory yours? Is it just your package that owns the directory, or is it uh, yeah. some other package? Will, will, will work exclude yeah. and then just manually specify. Not, not even that. You can you can use. Uh, there is a macro dir uh, which you can use inside the file section, which uh, will say, I just want to include this directory. And then underneath, you say, okay, and besides just packaging this directory, I have this configuration file inside, which you can use the macro config. Yeah. We will speak about it later, but for, for now. If you say, uh, uh, by the way, I just to go back to the name and, and email address, uh, the RM, RPM that bumps back uses environmental variable RPM underscore packager. Uh, to fill out your name and email address in the changelog. Uh, so I suggest you set it up in your bash or whatever shell you're using. Um, so dot bash rc or somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I mean, I use ADC. You should use uh, in, in a real spec file some macro, but for, for uh, just to make the thing simply, I use the ADC. So if the file section use ADC, it will include these directories and all its content in the, into the package. If you put person there ADC, it will just include that directory and nothing else. Uh, if you speci specify person config atc foo, it will include this file from atc directory and mark it as config. Yeah, so in your case, uh, you can uh, you can say dear atc, then enumerate uh, some files from the atc, uh, and some of them mark as config, some of them no. Uh, actually, actually, you should never. If, if this is really the example, yeah. you should never own the etc. Because yeah, yeah, I, I just yeah, that's don't, exactly. don't want to write long, long names. Right. Uh, and uh, I, don't, uh, I believe I will have it late, later in the slide, but uh, other option is exclude, exclude 
uh, dash APC APC bar. So if you use this and this, let's let's ignore these two. Uh, this will say okay package uh, directory ATC and everything below, but exclude ATC bar. Okay? So so you can combine these uh, these definition together to make something which makes sense for for your case. Uh, and we will come to the part later, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, we should build now our, our uh, package now. Uh, our, our spec is somehow same. Uh, save the file and run rpm-dp uh, and dot spec. Uh, it should uh, complete without errors and you should see this directory rpm build slash build enum uh, one dot one. Uh, please do that now. If you will have uh, some problems, just raise your hand and colleagues will try to help you. Um, Maybe it's uh, it, I'm anti build requires. Yeah, that's okay. And uh, it complains that it, it, delete the line. Delete the line. Oh, it's just an template. So what you. All right, because yeah. If Which part we didn't mention? Just, just, just remove it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, and we are going to fill in the blanks uh, we made previously. First thing we we skip is license. We said we just put there to do. So let's uh, uh, change to this uh, to build directory. And investigate uh, the unpacked uh, sources and uh, look for the files like copying or license or readme, where usually is is said uh, under which license it is released. Uh, you may find their uh, copying file, which says that is released under which license. It doesn't say the name. Yeah, there is actually the, the the license text, which if you will compare it to, to licenses, you will find that it's a BSD license. So you will return to the spec file and instead of to do, you will put there uh, BSD. So if I put BSD, it's the free call this BSD version. It's for both. Uh, it, it's for uh, both. Yeah, it's written on the Fedora wiki. It's for the two calls and for the three calls. Okay. We don't we don't necessarily distinguish uh, uh, all the different kinds of every spectral. Like uh, there are a lot of different versions of the ver um, license which translate into the same short name, such as PSD. Um, so, yeah. Okay, uh, on the on the. Uh, Oh, from the from the package guidelines, uh, there is a link to the licenses wiki, where is uh, described uh, all the tricky part, like uh, if the uh, package is dual license uh, or there is uh, one part license under one license, and second part under the second license, ADC. Uh, but uh, please don't skip this part and wave it. Well, okay, well then this is some open license. Uh, even if some project uh, say, okay, we are releasing a uh, BSD license, they may bundle some libraries or take one library from somewhere else and maybe proprietary. Who knows? Uh, we had some uh, such problems a uh, few years ago uh, where we found that uh, there is uh, several lines of proprietary code in GLC. Uh, uh, I never noticed that before. So, uh, if you're going to do the license uh, uh, audit, uh, you may audit every file and you should see the header where you, is usually the copyright information and then see where the information is, uh, where the copyright information is. This may be a little bit tricky for a large project. Uh, there are tools to help with 
it is like Federal Review, which we'll talk about that later. Uh, but yes, please spend spend some time with this part. This is boring part, but but it's needed. What to do if the license is not specified? Uh, investigate. So that means uh, uh, look look at the look at the upstream uh, project. I, for example, I know there is no license in the code. Uh, there, it's completely skipped by the author. Yeah, check check the web page of the author. Uh, if there, if there is uh, nothing specified as well, which is uh, quite usual as well, then contact author and uh, ask them which license he want to use. And in ideal world, ask him to make new release of the tarball where he put the license file where he specified the license. This is should item for the review. So even if you know the license and there is no license specified in the in the tarball, uh, you should contact the upstream author uh, to put the license uh, uh, there. Okay. And uh, what to do in the cases that there is, for example, piece of code it was copied from web page, for example, and for some blog post, uh, I already saw that. That, for example, in doc was this is copied from and was there a link to some blog post and for example author is not responding or it uh, it's not released or as some project it was as it, it was released as a blog post how to solve something that it is blocker you uh, you should not have all licensing clear you should, if not contact author if he's not responding if he doesn't. Uh, or want to specify the license or whatever, then we are unsure and we couldn't release it uh, in the federal. Uh, although in in the case, for example, if it's just a documentation blog post, uh, let's say you can. What you, you can do? Uh, okay, you probably cannot even distribute it. Uh, so you have to make a clean tarball without the dead file. But you can still, if if the package works without it, which obviously since it's just a documentation. You can just remove it from tarball, create a new one, and package that, and that would be acceptable. So if I it, it, but that's that's the last result, resort if you really cannot get the author to clarify usually, the usually license. Usually, the author responds and say, "Yeah, okay, I'm releasing under a WTF license, and uh, I don't care, just just do that." Uh, but but he yeah, has to set that. Uh, shall I pro probably save this email somewhere? Uh, that if you if if the author doesn't release a new tarball with the yeah. licensing clarified in the files, then you should uh, add that, attach that email oh. to uh, to do SRPM. I think uh, there is uh, a, there's a review. Yeah. It's sufficient. We just just done it uh, I can, uh, I can look recently. It up again. I, I mentioned the, the the packaging of the game, and uh, there was an example where. Uh, there was the problem with licensing. We, we had to remove some part, but the game worked even without that. Uh, but then we found that uh, in the data pack uh, there was some uh, um, data uh, to be specific, uh, some textures uh, which were uh, taken from uh, some website which uh, selling the textures, cgtextures.com cg and uh, in the license of the package was said that these packages are owned by cgtextures.com but they explicitly allow to release these few files under creative common license. Okay, we checked the uh, website of the cgtextures.com and in the uh, frequently asked question was that uh, you can buy from the texture from them from small change but you couldn't release them under open source license so we said okay so we have problems so I contact the cgtextures.com for, for the explanation and they explained that okay they made some exception and then they allowed the, uh, the company which created the game uh, to uh, distribute these specific files in a scaled down resolution in their file, their game 
under open source uh, license. Uh, so this was an uh, issue with Happy M. But sometimes uh, this doesn't have uh, and and this well and you have problem and uh, you can uh, put your package into there. Um, just to go back to the email thing. Uh, so the packaging licensing guidelines uh, um, and license clarification says that a copy of the email containing full headers must be included as source file marked as doc in the package. This file is considered part of the license text. So if you if you get a okay. response from the author saying okay you can use this file under Creative Commons by SA 30 whatever send that email and attach it to the package. I have one more question. If the author claims uh, it is published under some license and then after all it turns out there is a problem, for example you included some proprietary stuff and so on, can it be to fill up project itself at least or if or is it just a problem of the of the project? Or of the Both. Both? Yeah. Okay, so So the up upstream have trouble. Mm -hmm. They couldn't if you, if you find that and uh, publicly announce it, uh, then upstream has to somehow resolve it or 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 or, or um, just uh, pull back the files. And uh, of course the same apply to Fedora. So uh, Fedora has to uh, pull back the files. So if it is let's say the uh, game, there is no problem. But uh, uh, when uh, this problem was fine in glibc, it was a huge problem. So because if you pull back the glibc, then nothing will have work. Yeah, well, the, the question was whether someone can sue Fedora itself instead of the upstream. Yeah, theoretically. Yes. Yeah, theoretically yes. So that's the reason why uh, this is uh, so important to make this out. Okay. Uh, when you are in doubt, uh, feel free to email Fedora Legal or Legal at Fedora Project or the first one is mailing list, the uh, second is just, just email and ask for cl clarification. Uh, for example, I had an uh, issue when I tried to package uh, Tanuki wrapper, which is some script for, uh, which allowed to start uh, Java binary as demons, uh, which was released under GPL version 2, with two sentences appended. But these sen two sentences have uh, low, uh, low problems because uh, in those two sentences it was said, okay, Tanuki wrapper software, which is some Japan company, uh, claims uh, that uh, words Tanuki, Java, Java wrapper uh, is owned by Tanuki software. Okay, for Tanuki wrapper it wasn't a problem, but uh, when you uh, uh, agree that uh, Java wrapper, which is generic word, uh, is owned by some company, then you may start a uh, problem because suddenly you have a uh, uh, licensing, uh, which is just, just the two words, licensing content in the Fedora. Yeah, so, so that was probably we we had a long discussion with them and asked them if they can change the license back to pure GPL2 they, they resist so it was not included in Fedora broker, sorry. Yeah. Uh, and it applied to you if you are trying packaging new uh, software, please don't ever try to create your own license. Even if this simple license like, okay, do whatever you want with that, you will for sure will have some lawyer problems with that. But there is plenty of existing licenses already uh, mentioning on that uh, packaging guidelines license sections. 
uh, choose one license from from that, uh, and don't create some some new one. Yeah, ideally you will pick a like you would pick a license from Free Software Foundation or OSI approved licenses. Um, one of the very great examples of how a simple one simple sentence can completely scrub licensing is. Uh, there was a normal MIT or BSD license at the end. The last sentence was, this software, uh, this software may not be used for evil. Yeah. Uh, and that, that one simple sentence caused that the license was non-free and the whole package was non-free. It couldn't be added into Fedora because uh, it's, a, it's, a, your, it's a evil thing? Yes, it's a, it's a user restriction. No matter how you put it, it's a user restriction. And, well, for example, it is used in army. Yeah, and is it good thing or evil thing? It, it, it's well, it's unenforceable. It's it's weird. So things like that, it's really just to, if, if you are doing upstream development and thinking of making up a new project, please just pick one of the licenses from yeah. from uh, OSI to list. Okay, so we found that co copying file is uh, contains the license. Uh, uh, the license file, sh if Tarball contains this file, should be included in your package. Uh, so, in the file section, put their uh, macro uh, uh, person doc and uh, put, uh, put their copying person doc uh, space copying there. Uh, it will do uh, one thing, it will take the copying file from your build root and put it into user share dog name of your package with version uh, slash. Uh, so you don't need to do that manually. RPM do that for you. So uh, all, all this uh, uh, documentary stuff like uh, or, or basic, not, not, not let's say Generated documentation, but uh, the README, license, copying, changelog, or what you decide that is necessary for your package to be included, uh, put it put it there into this doc section. Uh, for the record, just to clarify, the copying file you don't have to put it into our, you know, you don't have to even mention it in the install section. It just has to be present in the unpacked tarball. Uh, it will basically the, the dog macro will search. Well, Will search at the beginning, beginning, uh, or the root of the unpacked tarball, uh, or what, yeah. what the setup macro does. Okay, so, so this is a relative path starting at the build so, here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. At the build root. So uh, you, you you don't have to install it. The, the RPM will take care of that for you. Okay. When we are done, save your file. And, and should I make separate documentation package? Uh, not just the copying in, in the guidelines are specified if uh, you have uh, significant, significantly big documentation. So if you have a package which has, or so let's say library, which has documentation included and it's only one file, then there is no need to create a doc sub package. But if it is 20, 50 uh, files, each uh, several kilobytes big, then you should think about moving it to doc pack, sub package. There is no strict rules where, where the border is. Uh, it's up uh, I can do it in one spec file. Yeah. We can, we can show some examples of. Uh, Maybe later. Yeah. Okay. Uh, question. Uh, for example, if the upstream project doesn't have an advantage, and I write it, then what should I do? You can include it as source zero. No, source one. Oh, so source one, okay, sorry. So, so it's another source. Yeah. And, yeah. and then I, I'll just put it. And of course you, you, you may to send it to upstream and yeah, sure. it'll be included yeah. in the next release. Okay. Yeah, so source zero. One. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> one. I am saying zero. It's, you know, you're always cutting from me. Um, I was thinking it's half past 12, almost. Ah, uh, I will, I will end in 10, 10 minutes. Yeah. So we will finish soon and then we'll go to lunch. Uh, uh,
Okay, I'll skip this one. Uh, build root. Uh, okay, I, I already mentioned that build root is uh, was used in some uh, in bars, but it's not used now. So if you see these snippets, uh, you can safely remove them uh, right now. Uh, okay, so save it, and if you run it, uh, what do you will get? CD R RPM build uh, spec uh, RPM build minus VA and um, if you will run it, you will get some errors. And it's actually useful errors because RPM build just told us which file should be in section in file section. He he's, he said to us that this package are presented in build root, but we don't have them. Yeah, but where the hell is it class? Yeah. Can you show the command again, please? Come on. The command. Yeah. RPM build dash B like build A like all which means source and binary package and the spec file. Yeah. So RPM build just told us, hey, you have these files in build root. But you didn't mention them in in file sections. What is, is that problem? Uh, yeah, we are very glad that he told, that, told us that because we can put them in file section now. Vi and spec, and you can obviously put them with with full full path as was said there. But uh, as I said, you should use. Uh, uh, macros, uh, if possible, so put their person underscore man here, man one, and um dot one, and star. The star is here because it's a uh, uh, gzip uh, by RPM by default, uh, and it is gzip uh, gz for right now, uh, but we can decide anytime that. Uh, we will use uh, bzip or xz uh, compression so if you don't want to change it if we decide to use different uh, compression for my pages just just put their uh, start the end and uh, we will use uh, bin your macro for uh, instead of uh, user as bin user bin dear dear bin I don't so. Person about underscore bin here slash uh, and that's all. About the macro notation, the slash ends to macro, right? The slash. Oh, no. It means the uh, macro yeah, slash. Macro yeah, slash. It's, it's, it's much safer to, to write it uh, like this one. Uh, because this is, this will explicitly say, okay, this is start of macro, this is end of macro. So. Uh, well, basically, well, the slash is just a path slash. It doesn't have. It, it doesn't. Well, it, it, the RPM will recognize it as the end of the macro because it knows that the slash cannot be part of the macro. But uh, yeah. it, it, it's yeah. tricky. It's not really a, a, a significant like this is going to end the macro. So okay. just yeah, it's better to so enclose it in the. If you phrase. if you will write this to your spec file, save it again and run again RPM build. Dash B A uh, and spec and uh, it should uh, finish without problem. If I've everyone created the the final, and if if you don't get yeah, the voila, final results, and we have uh, source RPM here and uh, the binary and the DBF info uh, for ABRT. Sure. For automatic back reporting system. Uh, mm, what about it? To the back info package. Oh yes, they were going to, not not just for that, but yes, <laughs> also. And that is And the, the source system. RPM includes the the sources. Yeah. Yeah. And you 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 may see RPM query package and list of 
contents uh, the uh, it will contain the uh, tarball and the spec file and RPM query package and the binary will contain this file. So it is the user being anonymous, uh, the dog directory and the copying can change log file and the main page. Uh, what you, uh, so yes, the, the source RPM contains the spec and the source tarball. Uh, what it's useful for is you can give this someone just this one file, source RPM, you can give it to them and they can sim simply run RPM build dash dash rebuild uh, and path to the uh, source RPM and it will do the whole process of generating the binary RPMs from scratch on their machine so it will link against their libraries and it will work on their system. And it's not like, it's not going to always work but it's mostly going to work. At least on the same version of the distribution. Okay, um, very quickly. Uh, last slides. Uh, 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 so we have package uh, run. Uh, you may do some check checking like RPM link above. I will leave it for uh, for later. Uh, uh, if you find some problem and you want going to fix them, uh, don't don't forget to build, build a, uh, bump up the release and put uh, put lines and change log. Uh, uh, use uh, uh, keep it simple, stupid pra uh, practice. Uh, Use patches if possible. Avoid doing uh, hacks in build or install section. Uh, do minimal uh, work uh, with change log. Be consistent with macros. Uh, uh, you, if uh, you are doing something non-standard, use comments where you explain uh, what you done. Uh, one thing which beginners try to do is use RPM inside a uh, spec file, especially in pre or post section when it is in, uh, which is executed before package is installed on machine or after it is installed. Don't ever do that. Uh, you are calling RPM from inside RPM and uh, Inception. That's, uh, sometimes works but it will behave strong, uh, strangely, like the Ghostbuster people when they cross the streams in the library. Uh, one, uh, one actually use case that I've seen that actually made sort of sense was uh, that there were two packages which were, which the second one was locked into a specific version uh, which, with which it, it, it was built. So if, uh, if the dependent package changed, uh, the, the second package had to be rebuilt because otherwise it wouldn't work. Uh, so it had build requires and requires had to contain the specific version, uh, the same one. So in, in that case there, there was a macro which asked RPM what is the version of this, uh, of this package that I'm building against and put it into requires. And it was kind of weird. Uh, then we got rid of it later. So, but this is really one case right. that it may work, but yeah. may any time break. You know. yeah. Well, about the dependency help, if you have two packages, binary, and uh, each of them requires the other one in specific version, uh, it works, right? Yeah. But if you want them to be pretty required while building, you're in trouble, right? Uh, no, 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 this wasn't about cycling dependencies. There are cycling dependencies, but it was not, not one. Yeah, it's was it, if it's possible to build two packages at the same time or something like that. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you have problem with bootstrapping, but once it is built for the first time, then it, it is possible scenario. So, so uh, there, is, there is a process for bootstrapping uh, where usually you include uh, sort of a binary tarball in the in the in the source RPM at the first round, 
uh, you compile it and then recompile it again without the binary part. So just, but you need to somehow start the and then you to, recompile to the cycle. so yeah. many times that yes. the binary drop in the beginning. No one yeah. sees it. The, the problem is if someone took the current uh, current source RPMs, those cycles would be broken again. But yeah, it, it can be broken and but it's it's, quite, it's often done. Beyond, beyond, beyond this workshop. Yeah, it's okay. definitely beyond the beginner. Okay, last slide. Uh, uh, be your mind, be your mind that uh, you are doing a package for uh, more users. So uh, uh, take your time with that package. That you you build that only once, but it will be used many many times, especially in Fedora. Thousands and thousands of users will use that. So uh, uh, if you will spend one hour more on your package, uh, you will save. Uh, even one minute for for user, you will save one thousand uh, minutes uh, on whole installation. Uh, last but not least, useful links. Uh, I will give you the slides at the end. Uh, here is links to the guidelines uh, for the review guidelines. We will be uh, speak about later. Uh, the maximum RPM, which is very very old, but still useful documentation of RPM. Uh, you may use uh, this this web page is uh, the source files and spec files uh, of the every package in Fedora. So you may uh, get inspiration from these uh, files how how they done the uh, their thing in past. Uh, if you are uh, in trouble and you are unsure with packaging, you may uh, write to Fedora packaging mail mailing list and people very quickly respond and are very helpful. Uh, RPM link is not mentioned in here. here. In Czech, uh, there is a Rukovic Baliče uh, on the ABC, ABC Linux website, uh, which is which may be very useful as well. It's from 2009 or 8. It, it's, it's quite outdated. Outdated, but, but still very useful. Uh, it contains really in detail, in really uh, great detail, the internals of RPM. It, and go, and it, it's really a great resource if you can read the check. So. If, if you can read the check, I would strongly suggest and, and that reading that guide. Okay. Okay, so, so this is end. Uh, for now, uh, can go to lunch right now, uh, and after the lunch, we will continue with a uh, quick uh, presentation uh, of uh, with uh, will tell us about uh, uh, Fedora Fedora process. Uh, very quick. Uh, then we will. Uh, to uh, we will work on your packages and then 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 we you, you will speak about the writing uh, I think I think the work on the packages will take uh, longer depends on the package. Uh, so I guess I will after the process or part of the process we'll see. If you, you know, uh, I'm going to talk about tool which can help you get more sanity into your packages, uh, especially, especially from Fedora point of view. And we will explain you how to ex actually get your package into Fedora. Yeah. And then we'll, we can actually try to do it. But it's, 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 I, mean, I, I, really message idea. I, uh, I would like to list all of them, but I don't think I can. Well, it doesn't matter. Um, try the four cycles. Sorry? Not to the four cycles. <laughs> your time. Uh, doesn't, doesn't really matter that much. Um, what is uh, RPM Lint doing? It, uh, RPM Lint is a Python uh, script uh, which looks for certain patterns in spec files and RPMs and tries to guess if, uh, if there might be a problem. It checks quite a lot of things, uh, but it doesn't check everything. Um, uh, one of the most common warnings, the RPM issues, is the spelling error, which is quite often the quite most often the false positive. Uh, 
So in this case, I'm going to actually uh, get rid of oops, get rid of it. And the only non-spelling error is we have an RPM, which uh, RPM link tells us there is no documentation at all. Uh, so it means that there is no uh, no file marked as doc in the file section, uh, which also means there is no license file in the in the RPM because if there was, it would be marked as doc. Um, and also there is apparently some invalid URL. Um, it doesn't recognize at inject dash one tar exz, um, which is because I, I did this is my package. I created it out of a tarball, uh, sorry, out of uh, SVN checkout instead of tarball because the upstream didn't provide any tarball. Um, so uh, this is the RPM link does really basic checks. Uh, but we do have a tool in Fedora which does something a little bit more elaborate, uh, which is called Fedora Review. Uh, which is also a Python project. Uh, but there are plugins in shell and, and different languages. Uh, and basically, RPM Lint is a generic tool for all the distributions uh, and checks really the most common things that, is, that are common for all the uh, RPM distribution. Is it, no matter if it's OpenSUSE, Magia, Mandriva, or uh, Fedora. Fedora Review is a slightly different thing. Uh, there is a check. Well, there is not a check for every step in the guidelines, uh, but a lot of guidelines uh, requirements are expressed in Fedora Review. Um, so it will try to build the package uh, uh, and see if it, if it builds, if the build requires are correct, if the requires are correct. Uh, it will run. It, it will itself run RPM lint on, on all the RPMs uh, generated by the source RPM. Uh, it will run language specific checks. Uh, it will uh, check, for example, if the source tarball is the same as the upstream provides. If there is a URL to the upstream uh, to the upstream source which normally there should be, as we mentioned before. Um, um, it will check the, if there are any differences between. Um, this is relatively new, mm, but um, I would suggest you, whenever you're creating your RPM packages, that you run this on your package. Um, you can get a list of So this is the list of checks that the uh, Federal Review knows about. Uh, there are some checks for R uh, packages, which R, um, R is a statistics language framework, uh, hard, to, hard to say. Uh, there are some generic C, C++ uh, checks, which check, for example, if the header files, uh, files are in correct uh, directories, if uh, uh, libraries, as in SO files, are in correct places, and of course, sub, sub packages, if there need to be some. Um, there, is, uh, there are some license checks, 
there is a check, for example, even for the build route that uh, Mirag already mentioned, that is not required anymore in Fedora. So if, if you have a build route definition in your spec file and run uh, Fedora review, it will warn you that this is not no longer required. Um, there is, well, there is over a hundred checks. Uh, there are ch uh, checks specific to Java, there is some PHP, Python, Perl, but really just the basics. Uh, uh, Ruby, uh, I think the most comprehensive checks are written for Ruby and, and Java currently. Um, we do have a plugin uh, interface and sort of waiting for someone to uh, transform the guidelines into the uh, into the plugins for the review. Um, but um, okay, you can uh, if you want to try Fedora review out, you can just run yum install Fedora dash review. Now uh, I'm running a little uh, more up to date uh, version or really unreleased version mm -hmm. as of yet. Uh, if you notice the, the checks uh, last quite a long time, uh, that's because, uh, as Mirak mentioned before, uh, there's a tool called Mock, which runs RPM build in a sort of pristine, clean environment. Um, so it just downloads the basic packages and uh, uh, tries to build the package that you specify. Uh, the issue with that is that it has to download all those uh, fresh packages usually from the network and I'm running from Wi-Fi, I didn't cache this uh, so this is going to take a little bit uh, but I can show you how the how the, uh, how the result So, in the end, it outputs a text file which looks approximately like this. The output changes from version to version, and we try to improve it all the time, but it boils up to this, it generates uh, a text report, a sort of a checklist uh, with issues mentioned at the top. Uh, so for example, uh, for add inject package, it, it says that for Java packages, they should have required building powers on JPEG utils, even if they built uh, without that, it's sort of a requirement um, that also it uh, doesn't have, Java.sub sub package doesn't have requires and data package equals. And there are other checklists. Some of them, if you notice, are checked, some are not. Uh, because Fedora Review, what it can do automatically, it does automatically. So, for example, uh, package does not run RMRF which is right at the top uh, this. This is the check uh, for obsolete uh, RMRF uh, build route uh, that's only needed for Apple 5. Now, since uh, the add inject in question didn't have any, it said, okay, it doesn't have RMRF in the still section, so I can just say this is checked and it's okay. But for some, uh, for some checks, it either wasn't possible to evaluate if, uh, if the condition is met, if the package is really correct or not, uh, such as such as licensing, which is the most common problem. Uh, we, we do have a few checks for, for licensing, if the licensing file is included or not. But we, uh, it's really hard to do it automatically, so uh, we just output the text that what, what the packager should review and should check. 
but we don't actually say it's okay because that's up to the packager or the person doing the review uh, of the package to decide. Um, there's quite a few checks on it still. Um, so, this is specific, it gives you output, it checks for, uh, checks some whatever. Um, if you want to try it out, it's you can run it. Uh, you should have both the binary charts and the source RPM charts in your current directory. checking on the build, uh, build RPMs and N just means uh, it requires an argument which is the name of the RPM to check. In our case it's add inject, it will actually look for uh, uh, add inject star RPM files in the correct directory and it will run the tests on them. So if you have the, uh, oh, what was the RPM name? Um, enum. Uh, so you, you can do the same. Uh, if you copy the uh, binary RPMs and the source RPMs of enum just created before launch, if you copy it in, a, in your current directory and then run uh, further, you don't have to do try further review, I just use it because I'm using the git version. So just run Fedora review dash RPM uh, enum in the directory with your uh, RPMs, uh, RPMs uh, and run enter and it will build the package and run the checks on it. You can try it out. Uh, it will likely take a while uh, if you haven't built the package in mock yet. Uh -huh. I have to put source RPM. And the binary RPM. And the spec file in the center. Uh, the spec file shouldn't be needed. Okay. You, you don't need the spec file, but the source RPM and the binary RPM, you, you should put it in. Are you developing for as well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, one thing to note is that Fedora Review, this actually ties into. Ah, okay, so. This, my run is finished. Um, Can you show the command? Oh, yes, sir. Can you see it? Oops. Oh, it's, it's going to be for you, it's going to be this. Change it in a in a newer version, but uh, yeah, the version you will have after you install YAML install the review is gonna require this exception down the road. Exception? Exception down the road. Ah, really? That's it fun. Doesn't say what kind. Of yeah, you have to look into cache files. That's that's kind of fun. I'm just in my yeah, no, um, okay. that's okay. Uh, how can I need tilde?
not cheat. Right, the latest version in Fedora review doesn't check. Okay, so you're not, uh, whoever had an exception, uh, what you need to run um, before is you should uh, sign in as root. This is weird, it doesn't expect this. Um, so I'm gonna. Um, the uh, 
the enum source RPM into binary RPMs. And then even Fedora review should work. <laughs> but um, the point was there was a there is a process which we will not cover today uh, of getting your RPMs actually into Fedora. Uh, sorry? Or, well, we, we can, but, um, okay, the, the point was that uh, we'll talk about it next time. Um, but uh, if anyone, we, we can go through, this, this will be focused on creating the as good package RPMs as we can. And then I guess the next session will be about really getting the package into Fedora and going through the process. Um, but part of that process is uh, having a peer, someone else from Fedora, reviewing your RPM and it's done in our Bugzilla. I'll manage, I'll show. Uh, which has bugs, review request, basically every package that is supposed to go into Fedora has to go to a process through our Bugzilla where some other packager just looks at the package, verifies that it builds and confirms to the packaging guidelines that, you know, some, just uh, a second pair of eyes to verify that, you know, uh, licensing is okay, that there are no patents issues in the package. Uh, it's not designed uh, to prevent packages from getting into Fedora, it's designed so that packages that get into Fedora are uh, high quality and don't have legal or other issues. Uh, currently there are, let's see, over 1000 bucks open for new packages to be added into the program, uh, which can seem like a lot, but a lot of these packages are uh, sort of held up uh, uh, because of licensing issues or um, they depend on each other, stuff like that. Uh, there's quite a few of them, actually. Um, but we will, don't worry, we will not go through all of them. Uh, not even one, actually. Can I have this question? When does the repository freeze? I mean, like, can I still get a package into Fedora 17? Uh, you can always get package into all supported Fedoras. Uh, there is no um, freeze for package additions. Uh, it's just a slightly different procedure for if you want to add a package to a Fedora that has already been released. It, uh, well, after you get the package in, it's a lot slightly more, more work and for, for that release, but uh, again, not going into that because it's, uh, it's a one tool that's specific to the uh, But the problem was a lot of people were, a lot of people were actually uh, just running Fedora review and pasting the output into the box. Uh, so to prevent that, we started outputting this warning that Fedora Review is automatic tool, but it's automatic tool, but you are responsible for reviewing the results and finishing the review. You don't just copy paste the results without understanding them, uh, which is true for RPMs as well. So if you are not sure how something works, do not assume that it's the correct way and that's how it should be done. Um, yeah, most importantly, uh, if even if the upstream provides RPMs, and 99.9% .9 uh, of cases, uh, the upstream RPMs will not confirm to Fedora packaging guidelines. Even mostly in small, insignificant ways, which are easy to fix quickly. But you shouldn't really uh, rely on the upstreams to provide spec files and RPMs. 
Um, so, this is the latest. Two question. Yeah? What if I'm the upstream? Can I put this zip file to the door and write the Yeah, example? of course. But then, uh, <laughs> that's my part. Um, we do it as well. Uh, uh, but then that spec file will likely not confirm to guidelines of OpenSUSE or Magea or Mandriva or some other rapid distribution. In, in a lot of cases, they use the same guidelines or very similar ones, but there are always small differences. Um, although I think that Fedora has actually the most strict guidelines, uh, not just the legal ones, but generally. Uh, so if you conform to Fedora guidelines, you will most likely create a spec file which works okay on, on other distributions as well. Or at least from the from the backend point of view. And do, do you have uh, some experience from other distribution? For example, if some software is spec to under Ubuntu and there are no problems, uh, shall I expect that there won't be any problems, for example, I mean with licenses and so on under you, Fedora? You can expect that. But you should verify that. Yeah. As I think it's easier if you can rely on Debian. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. If, if, you, if, you, if the package is in Debian, then there is a very high probability that the package is going to be okay because Debian guys are really <laughs> strict uh, about licensing things, which is, which is a good thing because once something is in Debian, there's a really high probability it's going to be okay. But, but uh, we are all humans, so even they can uh, overlook some some, some, yeah. some yeah. issue. Um, so this is this is the latest version of Fedora Review, and as, as you see, it outputs a little bit more warnings and errors. Um, but uh, uh, have you managed to actually run it uh, after you added yourself to the mock group? Mine is stuck on Yama update. The on Yama update? Oh, no, the, the mock is stuck on Yama update. Yeah, okay, well, it's going to take a while, but... No, I don't know, it, just, it says just trying out the mirror, but I don't see anything. Ah, okay, so maybe the network is kind of uh, So, <laughs> okay, I was right. <laughs> well, let's try it with the case. No, I have a Wi-Fi right now, so... Ah, okay, it should... So, no, okay, then if, if you're on Wi-Fi and it works, then it should work. Or mirrors as well. Yeah. Uh, I just want to ver verify. If there is exclamation mark, it's bad. Yeah. If there is a cross, it's good. Um, it, the key is up there. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, if there yeah. is nothing, if there is so nothing, it doesn't work. Yeah. Right. Now, uh, if you see in your reviews, in your outputs, it's gonna be saying a little something a little bit different. The key is different in your than than, than up here right now. We changed it because there were questions what what all the things mean. Uh, so yeah, the X means that it's sort of dead. The check is okay if we decided that it passed the test. Uh, exclamation point, there is a failure. Something we really think is a problem. Um, if there is a dash, it means that the test is not applicable to the package. Uh, you will never actually see it in the output of the automatic tool. And it's um, because if the test is not applicable to the package, we don't show it actually here. Okay. Uh, we, we do have over 100 tests. So if we showed each and every one, it doesn't make sense, for example, to add uh, Ruby checks into Java review template. So we don't show them. Uh, but uh, it can happen that we actually put stuff there that is not supposed to be there. So then reviewer can either remove it or, you no, know, it's just, um, doesn't matter. Um, we will probably get rid of the question mark because it doesn't make sense. And then there is the manual review needed, which is, if there is empty space, it means we couldn't decide if it's okay or not okay, or we didn't check at all because it's, it cannot be checked, for example, licensing. Mm, we can just sort of output some Hints of eh, this probably works or not, doesn't work. Okay, so for example, there is must spec file lux, package vendor, and project tax. It means it must yeah. lux them. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it shouldn't have it. It, it should, yeah, it must not have an added. The wording is weird in that. Okay. Test. 
But we, I think we, did, we fixed it. Yeah, we, we, we changed the text. Okay. There's no must anymore. Uh, well, it is, but uh, to simplify, uh, yeah. we, we added the must as, you know, we had a must section. Yeah, yeah, but the, uh, what I meant it's before, it's weird when you read it, it's must, and then this yeah. starts. And so, uh, yeah, I know. So we, we change it, this is must items, and then we list all the items that must be met, and that cannot be omitted, or, you know, it's not just a suggestion, it must be like that. Yeah, but if, and the empty ones means that it all needs uh, manual review. Yeah, it means we cannot check it automatically. Okay. Uh, but in any case, the review is just a tool to simplify doing. Huh, there is a. Well, what I actually would like to know is how, why can you not check like a package must own all directory that it creates? Why can't it be automatically tested? Uh, package must own all directories that it creates. Uh, we cannot test it uh, because, for example, package will create. Uh, well, let's say etc tomcat yeah. directory. It means it created etc directory, yeah. but it should not own etc. It should just own etc tomcat subdirectory. We we cannot know which where where should it stop. I'm gonna. Um, but yeah. so I mean for the stuff, I mean that's a standard. Uh, Layout of the, on the Unix system. Yeah, okay, we can check so, ETC. Yeah, like, these, okay. these kind of things could okay. be white listed. Okay, know? the problem is we can check for ETC, but yeah. we cannot check. You have packages which share a common ancestor. Yeah. Like, um, let's say, uh, some plugins. Yeah. Or, or let's say, Inex extensions, yeah. which will always reside in some sub special subdirectory. Um, but they will not own that subdirectory. Yeah, it's going to be Emacs package which owns that directory. But that should be like somehow expressible. Or something. Like this. Uh, you know that there is something like a shared uh, shared thing, so then you can check. It. Yeah, but it's not ge generic, or it's. Um, I'm actually not sure. Uh, it might be possible. We might be able to check. Not all the checks that can be automated have been automated already. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that this yeah. like, must be done now yeah. or whatever. I'm just saying that it might be worth thinking about it, especially with right. the RPM team to think yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. That modifying the spec files in that way that they actually can express things like this. Oh, uh, well, modifying the spec files is kind of tricky business. Uh, well, I mean, the spec file language. Well, but it could be a non, non uh, mandatory extension. Yeah. Which just helps. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Non mandatory extensions are. Yeah. are, are <laughs> You know, you make it non-mandatory, but then it means that Fedora spec files are completely non-working on other systems. And yeah, I mean with non-mandatory, it's like that if it's not there, yeah. it's just old format of the RPM file. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people would like RPM spec files to change a little bit. Uh, no, I'm not saying yeah, they're no. changing everything. It's just, it's you know, once you start going down that road, it's becomes unmanageable. Um, but, um, okay, so, but really, Fedora review doesn't do everything automatically, not, not nearly. For example, we have basically no checks for Perl, no checks for Python, no checks specific for ADA or um, Emacs extensions, for example, because no one wrote them yet. Because no one, I would assume that the people who actually package and take care of that stuff will package the plugins for further review. Well, we didn't get back to it yet. Um, okay, um, so uh, basically, we this is just uh, to show you the tooling. So there is RPM link, you can build uh, the RPMs, you can run further review on your packages which will give you a generic idea. Uh, and now we're basically moving on to uh, questions and the workshop itself where we will go around and, and help packaging the, the software which you wrote on the wiki. 
Um, if you have any more questions, we'll ask them, answer them you know, on the fly, sort of, as they come. From. But I'm going to drop off for a second. I'll be right back. You can, you can just start with uh, reviews. And, uh, well, not reviews, but uh, recognition of individual articles on the record. So, you know the uh, how to create this pack from from the first part made before launch. Uh, if you find some problems or issue, you may quickly check the Fedora packaging guidelines. If you find there are some snippet code or something you may use. Or you can always raise your hand and we will come to you and we will help you to fix your problem.
you can go one by one and you can you know share that you are going to package. It's going yeah, to be better than last year. Even if you create the password there, you, you don't have authority to edit this. Oh, really? Yeah. That's weird. It's probably yeah. ACLs because I know there are some packages you can, uh, uh, sorry, some pages you can edit the code, yes. you know, login. Yes. So it really depends on settings. Yeah. I, I think we can, we can go yes. over it and we can ask people if yeah. they are working. Uh, you know, uh, I wonder who wanted to pack it, uh, package Jenkins. Um, actually, I don't hold Jenkins because it's, it's uh, for ages. But <laughs> uh, so uh, you uh, just start with uh, some library. With, it depends. On yeah, 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 exactly. Well, we'll we'll start Jenkins and we'll see what's actually missing. Uh, okay, I'll I'll probably move on to there since I guess Maven is my kind of thing. But. Um, Depends. Okay, uh, I would actually say that each of us will say what they. Some each area, yes. Yeah. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm mostly uh, fluent in, in Java packaging. So, if you have a anything related to Java, but I think there was only Jenkins. Uh, I have actually, just a question. Um, I guess for for C++ stuff and so on. I mean, also for other things you can use. There's a pre-make. I don't know if you heard about that. Pre-make. Yeah, it basically generates uh, Gmake files or Visual Studio solutions or whatever build system, gives code solutions or whatever. And uh, if you need that for the for the build script, it's like CMake, but you need to run in a custom build step basically first before you can run Make. No problem. Now the question is just like, do you set them as a as a build dependency that you set pre-make as yeah. as the package? Yeah. It is, is or it if you need to, to say, like, when you package it, you generate before uh, the, the make files and then use them as a patch. Um, that I, be yeah, alternative. Yeah. Well, ideally, uh, you will use the upstream tarball yeah. and just add the well, uh, pre-make. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and, okay. No, then... You don't need package. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> no, but the question was, if yeah. you should do it like this. Um, is is the pre make pre make was it? Yeah. Uh, is it in Fedora? Yes. Then just add it to build requires and gen uh, regenerate the build service. Okay. Yeah. yeah we, 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 we do the same thing for our CMake. Yeah. You know, we run CMake. Yeah. CMake generates. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see like it well. Uh, make file and, and you know when you just call make. Um, so, so this is the way. Well, you, well, should, you should you should use pre-make and then use make. The advantage generated. of this is definitely that it's uh, the, the make generation that takes or C make or whatever takes mm -hmm. care of finding all dependencies already. I mean, like also the right uh, settings for the build. So that's why I, I prefer this. It, it depends. It depends. Uh, for example, for C make we have macros. Yeah. All different settings we really like to have uh, over the Federai for all projects using C make. Uh -huh. I'm not sure about pre-make. I, I never well, used it before. Pre-make is Lua based and you have some rules you can set what flags you want to include yeah, for building and whatever. So yeah, so, so probably if it's already in Fedora, it should be easy because it should be prepared if the maintainer prepared it. But it's, well, all I need to do is run pre-make for gmake and then yeah. it runs it. Yeah. So, so if, it, if it runs, then perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, things like that, if you, if you need to patch something or uh, for example, fix line endings, which is quite common. A lot of projects, especially Java, uh, they will package uh, files which have line endings which are windows, or uh, multiple other changes that you need to do after you unpack the tarball. Those changes should be done in the pre section uh, before the build, basically. Starts. So. Don't don't put that. You you could, you could theoretically run it in build, but uh, it's better to run it in prep for a few reasons. Okay. okay, so Stano is for Java. I'm here for mostly the desktop stuff or KDE Q stuff. Even I can help with CMake. So if you about using CMake or something like that, I, I have snippets. I can't promise you I will fix everything, but I try to find it and know how to spec and so on. So so for KDE CMake. Uh, QMake and so on, you can ask me. Um, I'm, I can also package Python, I'm not that well worked, but uh, it should be okay. 
at least for basic, a few basic stuff, libraries. I must have Python and Barrel Ruby. Okay. Uh, I just want to know, and it doesn't depend on Python Ruby, whatever. Uh, how can I split uh, Package. packages? Okay. Like I, I have yeah. documentation which is really huge and I want it on separate package. I'm gonna, I'm one just one gonna, package. We have some example there. Yeah, well, Okay, so so Ante is here for C, C++ and you can make some basic Python and yeah. main based stuff. So and of course, if uh, anyone from us you know is uh, you know busy with someone else, you can always try to ask us. We can find the solution. It's it's just back. Don't be afraid. want to generate, uh, we call them uh, in, in Fedora lingo or RPM lingo, they are called sub packages. Uh, you, you can do it like this, basically. Uh, after you know the description in the spec file, uh, you start specifying, uh, you can specify the sub packages, uh, which is especially useful if your uh, project which you're packaging is modular. So you have, for example, main application and then plugins, or you have application and then libraries which add additional features, additional support for bindings for Ruby, bindings for Python, bindings yeah. for Perl, whatever. Yeah. Um, and basically, you can repeat all of the uh, metadata from the header. Uh, well, it doesn't make sense to repeat the name, or, but sometimes the sub packages can have different version. Uh, you can, you should always include the summary, uh, and if the license is different, basically, if um, if the metadata is the same as the main package, you don't have to repeat it. Uh, if it's different, then add it there as well in the sub package. So you write uh, percentage package and then the name of the sub package. And the uh, name will be the, the original name plus. Page. Yes, exactly. Okay. If you want to change the name completely, uh, you can. Um, you, you will percent package uh, okay. dash n and yeah. you will write complete, complete name. So. Basically, in, in my case, since I'm packaging, uh, our, this is this is a spec file called our sub plugins. Uh, these two calls are identical in, in my name. Uh, or really, these two are identical. But it means if you use dash n, you can choose a completely different name for the sub package. Unless you have a really good reason to do it, don't do it. Uh, because uh, it will confuse people uh, who will not know how to find the, the source package. For example, we have a KDE workspace uh, package and we are shipping KDN wants to install just KDM, so we don't have KDE workspace uh, dash KDM, but we have some package KDM, just KDM. I actually have a question uh, regarding the still in our project, but I run it against the, the, uh, the Fedora review. Okay. It always says the uh, reviewer should test that the package builds the block, and it's not fair. Uh, it's failed. Yeah. It failed, but actually it, it doesn't check it. Though. It just always says it failed, uh, right? Uh, because it wants the initial it finishes. Uh, no, it actually checks. Uh, the problem is uh, we use RPN, uh, which uh, sort of tells the Federal Review it should, uh, it should use the pre 
build RPMs. So it's sort of, that's a bug as well. Uh, but the, the, the P, the P, yeah, there are a lot of bugs, especially in the version you are currently using. But uh, because this is not a normal use case which you are using right now, this is not a normal use case for Fedora. No? It's,